directed by Joaquin Dos Santos, Kim Powers and Justin K. Thompson, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is going to be released this week. So we thought this would be the perfect time to talk about the previous venture from the franchisee so that you can have a hassle-free viewing experience. But before that, a spoiler warning is in order if you want to enjoy the film with a completely clean slate as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the previous film and the comics. And if you are okay with that, kindly follow us through this video. You can also check out our breakdown of the second trailer of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse by pressing the i button. And while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. At the beginning of the film, we meet Miles Morales, an everyday high school student. At least from the outside, it seems that way. Miles is in many ways a child of two worlds because his mother is Puerto Rican and his father is African American. He was raised in New York City. His father, Jefferson Davis, is a respected police officer, while his cool uncle Aaron is implied to be a little more rambunctious. He is an accomplished graffiti artist but is also technically a vandal. And despite coming from a working class neighborhood, Miles was accepted into the Elite Visions Academy. He might evolve into a variety of roles, but his character arc will center on discovering his ideal self. At the same time, Spider-Man the Protector of New York is introduced. Though he is portrayed by Chris Pine, his tale is quite similar to broad strokes of events from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy with Tobey Maguire. The film offers us his superhero origin in a simplified telegraphic form. The day after being bitten, Miles starts to experience weird side effects including an abrupt growth spurt, his fingers sticking to practically everything they touch and an oddly keen and enhanced senses. After he remembers the spider bite by chance, he finds an old Spider-Man comic book where Peter Parker's struggles are shown to be similar to his own. When he returns to the subway tunnels to search for the spider, he finds Spider-Man engaged in combat with the Green Goblin and the Prowler. The two villains are attempting to prevent Spider-Man from meddling with the Super Collider, a particle accelerator of the Kingpin. Unwillingly dragged into the conflict, Miles is saved by Spider-Man when the two mutually recognize their shared traits thanks to the Spider-Sense. After managing the Super Collider, Spidey volunteers to train Miles. Unfortunately, he is forced into the Super Collider's nexus, which sets up a chain reaction that harms the device and sends spatial anomalies sweeping throughout the New York. Miles travels to help Spider-Man, who has been seriously injured. Spider-Man hands him a device which disables the Super Collider and prevents it from killing the Earth. Miles, of course, is untrained and has no control over his abilities. He hides and watches as Fist looms over the damaged and unmasked Spider-Man. Spider-Man informs Fist that the machine would not return his wife and son, who fled when they witnessed him attempting to murder Spidey and were killed in a car accident shortly after. Fisk, enraged by these words, murders Spider-Man on the spot. The death of Spider-Man revealed his identity as Peter Parker, a 26-year-old Columbia University graduate student, and it is a major blow to the New York City. Miles swears to take up his fight and use his skills to stop Fisk as the city mourns its pseudo. Being Spider-Man, on the other hand, proves to be far more difficult than he expects. His suit is just a store-bought Halloween costume given to him by Stanley in a posthumous appearance and he struggles with his powers, breaking Peter's device in the process. When Miles goes to visit Peter's grave, he runs into the last person he expects to see, Peter Parker himself, but not in the way he knows the hero. It is Peter B. Parker and he provides his superhero origin. He is in his late 30s and is becoming old. He has acrimoniously divorced from MJ and is out of shape. He is clearly from an alternate timeline and was recently hauled here. When he approaches Miles, he awakens in Miles a new power, the capacity to produce a bioelectric current. The two speak after fleeing from the cops. Peter just wants to go home, but Miles persuades him to teach him how to be Spider-Man. The two travel to a facility where Fisk's scientists are working on the Super Collider with the intention of copying the Collider's powers, recreating the flash drive that would shut it down, and stopping Fisk. While stealing a computer with the plans, they are discovered by Fisk's chief scientist Olivia Octavius A.K. Dr. Octopus. As they flee and Miles realizes he can also become invisible and they are held by the Spider-Woman A.K. Gwen Stacy, whom Miles remembers from school. She too is from another universe, one in which she was bitten by a radioactive spider rather than Peter Parker, her best friend, whose death forced her to become a loner. The Collider drew her into Miles' world as well. The three used the computer to find the residence of Peter's aunt, May Parker. 
Aunt May became Peter's secret keeper in this universe, supporting him by keeping a hidden base beneath her house. Miles and his new companions encounter three more spider people, Spider-Man Noir, a 1930s private investigator, Penny Parker, a little girl with a psychic link to a spider operating the robot SP double slash DR, and Spider-Ham, a cartoon pig. It is revealed that all extra-dimensional spider folks are suffering from cellular degeneration as a result of living in a foreign dimension and would die unless they return to their homes. This is a concern since someone must also guarantee that the super collider is turned off after the others have left. Miles volunteers to do it because he can stay in this reality safely but the other spider people demonstrate decisively that he lacks the qualities of a hero. Discouraged by the harsh words, Miles departs from that location. Miles goes back to Aiden's house for guidance only to find out that his uncle is the Prowler. He goes back to May's house to alert the others only to be met by Doc Ock, the Prowler, Tombstone and Scorpion. A fight erupts as Miles flees with the new device Penny created only to be caught by Aiden. Miles exposes his identity to Aaron as Fisk order Aaron to kill the child Spider-Man in his grasp. Aaron finally gives in only for Fisk to shoot him. Miles flees with an injured Aaron who has the foundational death by origin story of every Spider-Man, encouraging Miles to choose his own path with his dying breath. The spider people gather at Miles' dorm to plan how to stop Fisk. Miles is desperate to shut down the collider so that the others may return home. But Peter ties him up and brings the others to the collider. Miles' father enters the dorm and apologizes to him through his door for putting so much pressure on him, which has resulted in their poor relationship, and confesses that he pushes Miles as hard as he does because he sees so much promise in him. He gives Miles the go-ahead to be himself. This gives Miles the capacity to manage his powers, allowing him to break free from Peter's webs. His next destination is Armies, where he creates his own outfit by spray painting one of her nephew's costumes and receives some handmade web shooters. A battle erupts under Manhattan streets as Fisk reactivates the Super Collider, threatening to destroy Earth in the perilous hope of reconnecting with his family. Miles enters the action, fighting off Fisk's henchmen and utilizing the plot device to seize control of the Collider. Penny, Noah, Ham, and Gwen jump into the Collider's beams and return home. Peter B. Parker is the last to depart, initially hesitant but eventually consenting to leave the remainder in Miles' hands, after observing how his prodigy is prepared to take on the mantle. Fisk tries to murder Miles, but he sees ghostly visions of his wife and children and they look terrified seeing him nearly killing Spider-Man. In the end, Miles strands shooting Fisk with electrified webbing and triggering the kill switch, which permanently destroys the collider. Fisk and his associates are apprehended, the spider folks return to their separate realms and New York rejoices as a new Spider-Man appears to champion them. Noir has some fun with the Rubik's Cube he brought home with him, PW mends his relationship with Mary Jane Watson, Penny repairs SP double slash DR after it was damaged fighting Scorpion, Gwen discovers a way to contact Miles across dimensions, and finally Spider-Man 2099 Miguel O'Hara tries some multiversal travel of his own and creates a device that can stabilize the transition. This concludes the first part of the superhero franchise. My thoughts and prediction about the sequel are that Miguel is not actually a bad guy. He might be under the influence of someone evil who has control over his family or is threatening him with the life of his daughter. That person will probably be the spot who will turn out to be the main villain in the third installment of the Spider-Verse series. And Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse will probably collapse into phase 6 of the MCU. The trailer manages to tingle the dormant spider senses inside of us and shows us a variety of spider beings and people that we will get to see in a feature film pretty soon. As of now, all we can say is that if the sequel becomes as good and emotional as the first Spider-Verse film, the franchise might give tough competition to Holland Spider-Man universe in terms of character development and storytelling. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is slated to be released on June 2, 2023. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your expectations regarding Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse or who your favorite Spider-Man is from the universe. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema series. See you at the next one. And for the timing, we are signing off. Ciao, you can't be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man if there is no neighborhood and I'll be back.